location 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 when you talk to Skip Johnson about Girton and he says he's really gotten better with the process the last few weeks as well rich. Yeah he says like I said Skip said he's continuing to grow his pitch ability is getting better and he has great stuff he just has to keep growing like you were saying grow in the process and, and embrace it and you know like Skip always says you know pitch to pitch you know just throw the ball to the glove let's see what happens. It's a solid four innings in Oklahoma's win at TCU last Saturday. Two years at Texas Tech for Girton before coming to Norman. And a 2 2 count. So, West Virginia, how do you reset after what happened to you yesterday when you got no hit? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, but as, as a hitter, I mean, you got to come back and you got to go, you know, pitch to pitch, a bat to a bat. You can't, can't worry about the last one. You can't worry about the next one. You just got to stay in the moment. And uh, get good pitch to hit and hopefully barrel it up. Skyler King out of Columbia, South Carolina. Ground ball. Sooners kind of shifted over a little bit, so it's right at Isaiah Lane for the first out. As that time, the shortstop, McKenzie, was almost at second base, and Lane was essentially where a shortstop might play sometimes. Yeah, he was shaded over quite a bit, probably about 15 yards off the line. Uh, the Sooners they have been uh, a lot of shifts this year you know playing the playing the metrics I mean I guess if you have all that information you might as well use it but uh, and I've even seen them do some with left handers up change the shift with the shortstop on the other side of second base with two strikes yeah in the middle of an at bat you get to yeah. two strikes and you might see the third baseman go sprinting over onto the other side of the diamond yeah at times. Sam White takes a strike and it's even at one and one white the catcher batted in the leadoff spot last night went over two. That's the first time I've ever seen an adjustment like that with two strikes. That one squirts away from Scott Mudler. Let's look at the full defensive alignment for the Sooners in just a moment. But Scott Mudler is behind the plate. He caught last night instead of Easton Carmichael who's the DH today. This one pulled to Nicholas and the Sooner second baseman completes it. Went down in the TCU series in fact a week ago today and he has had surgery on his right hand the hemate bone. They hope to get him back in four to six weeks and Skip Johnson also talking this week about the injury to Carter Frederick broken thumb. He was playing flip before the Dallas Baptist game the other day rich and they really don't know the timetable on Frederick's potential return. Yeah those two guys I mean two key bats especially with uh, Frederick's power and obviously Spikerman a leader you know leading the team in average you know that's a tough one but uh, losing that extra power from Frederick is going to is going to be key to see who steps and fills that role for OU. West Virginia will not feel sorry for them. They've been hit as hard as any team in the country by injury including the Big 12 Player of the Year J.J. Weatherholt who's only played four games this year. Logan Sauve, Grant Hussey. I mean a myriad of injuries as this one is rolled to Snyder and Girton works a one two three first for the Sooners. I think that's what Coach Maisie likes best about him as he fills up the zone and gives his defense a chance. And he had five scoreless innings in the BYU series to open up conference play for the Mountaineers. Kendall Pettis drove in four runs for the Sooners last night in that 13 nothing no hit win. Foul tip there. Such a versatile piece of this Oklahoma puzzle is Kendall Pettis. You can bat him first. You can bat him ninth. You can bat him fifth. Just a lot of different places that you can plug him in. Goes after that one and he's out on strikes. So Bryce Madrin is set to stand in the Big 12 player of the week and with more on him is the third member of our crew today Carly Murray.
That's right, Chad. On Monday, Bryce Madrin earned Big 12 Player of the Week after helping leading his team to a 4 0 week, including a series sweep over number 12 ranked TCU, hitting 438 with a blast and four RBI. Madrin also stole three bases, drew four walks, and scored five runs. Bryce Madrin has been absolutely exceptional at the plate and a consistent bat associate head coach Reggie Willits can rely on. Thank you, Carly. Indeed, he has been so consistent. The Cali County Community College transfer hit a three-run home run a week ago today in that TCU series, which helped him earn the Big 12 Player of the Week honors. But down 0-2 against the lefty Clark. Yeah, imagine he can just flat out hit. You know, he's a cat guy. Wake up and wake up and get two hits a day. Started off a little slow this season, but man, he's last two weeks. He's really picked it up. Two balls and two strikes to Bryce. Was one for five and scored two runs last night. Batted up in the leadoff spot. Hit pretty well to right field. Lumsden, though, back to the warning track. will pull that one in for the second out. Maybe just got under it a tad bit. Yeah, it looks like he got under and got around it a little bit. And the win him back will be a big help for West Virginia. He's a, a veteran guy, is Hussey. Hit 14 home runs as a sophomore last year, and they have him available at first base as Easton Carmichael is in here for the Sooners. Scored four runs last night, three walks and a hit for him. Easton Carmichael batting 458 in Big 12 conference play in those seven games. That is third best in the league during conference play. And hits this one sky high into shallow right. Chumley, the second baseman, is called off here by Lumsden. And he dropped the ball. Carmichael's going to slide into second base on an error. Now, I don't know what happened on that one. Looks like he just popped out of there. Well, it's kind of a high sky, I guess you would say. Not much wind, and I don't know. I'm with you, Rich. It didn't really see him take his eyes off of it. It just popped yeah, out. Yeah, he, he was camped underneath it. I thought it, I was already writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody was. But the Sooner inning will continue for the red-hot Michael Snyder. 19 runs batted in in his last nine games. He has been a staple for Skip Johnson and the Sooners in particular in conference play. Yeah, definitely not a spot where you want to give up a free base and get get a man in scoring position with Snyder coming up. It's kind of a gentle breeze out of the south. You and I were talking the flags were blowing straight down while we were watching batting practice today and it's kind of coming out of the south southeast at five miles per hour at most. It's one of those rare almost windless days in Oklahoma and in fact it might have been a north wind this morning when we woke up and now it's shifted a bit to the south. Yeah it has. It was, yeah this morning it was blowing out of the north pretty good. Uh, like you said now it's calmed down and it's blowing straight down again. I'll take it. Yeah you don't get many of those in Oklahoma. <laughs> High chopper this is trouble for Barnett. Fields throws on the move but did not get him. So the Sooners trying to take advantage of the door being cracked open by the error and they'll have runners at first and third with two down. Yeah, good job getting down the line. That's a tough play for shortstop. Got to come get it and really run hard and get rid of the ball. He did a good job, a good exchange. About all he could do on that play. The infield hit for Michael Snyder. Used to him just punishing the ball. Might be the softest base hit he has all season. Yeah, for sure. And so here's Jackson Nicholas with a runner at third now. And that pitch just missed a tad bit outside. Good opportunity for Nicholas, who was two for three with an RBI and two runs scored last night. One and one to Nicholas. He's batting 400 in Big 12 conference games. That is 10th best in conference play.
one of the better pitches we've seen from Derek Clark so far. Yeah, there's that changeup left on left. That pitcher kind of die off and, and break down and into the left handed batter. There goes Snyder and this pitch is driven foul down the left field line by Nicholas as Sooners move the runner. This time they'll try to hold Snyder close. Well, Look borderline to me that step looked like he's a little bit past that 45 degree angle he's allowed to get. <laughs> Both these teams like to run. Well, that was really close. In fact, kind of a double clutch over there by Snyder. Had him guessing a little bit. Yeah, like I said, that angle is only supposed to be 45. I mean, the first base umpire is looking right at him, so I guess he's got a better view than we do. But from up here, it looks like he's a little bit past that 45 degree angle. Man, that was really close there. He's almost stepping at the on deck circle when he throws yeah. that ball over there. Uh -oh. and glances away from White, and Carmichael comes in to score the first run of the game. I think that'll be a pass ball on Sam White, Rich. Yeah, that ball was in the air. He just caught it off the toe and it got away from him. So Snyder advances to second. And the Sooners have taken advantage of a West Virginia error here in the first. And that's kind of what we talked about in the pregame is get a little momentum. Them getting ahead uh, this year when they, they play really well from ahead. And when they get up early, they get pitches to hit and hit them. Swing and a miss there by Nicholas, but the Sooners get a run on a hit and an error. And it's 1-0 Oklahoma ahead to the... That it is. You gotta stay tuned to your Twitter feed to make sure you don't miss something these right. days. Yeah. Cal West is in the DH today for the Mountaineers. A 1-2-3 inning worked by Brendan Girton in the first for the Sooners. Girton thought he had that pitch, but it's 1-1. One one. Kyle West was 0-3 last night. This one ripped out into left center field. That will head all the way and split the gap. To the base of the wall it goes. It'll be picked up by Kendall Pettis, the left fielder, but it's a leadoff double there for Kyle West to start things. So the Mountaineers have a base runner, a chance to tie it up here in the second inning, and let's go down to Carly. Mountaineers aren't the only team today who have a history of being aggressive on the base paths. In the last six seasons, West Virginia has been one of the best. From 2018 to 2021, the Mountaineers swiped 309 bases, ranking number one in the Big 12. In 2022, they were the most aggressive, ranking number two nationally with 156, the most in program history. And last season, West Virginia finished 11th in the nation with 128 stolen bags. But Chad, you know Oklahoma's not afraid to create chaos on the base paths either. No. <laughs> You're right. We could see a lot of chaos both ways. Thank you, Carly. Pitching staffs will have a lot to say about that. But this is what you want. You know, if you're West Virginia, that's their first hit this weekend. They go 10 innings without a hit. And now West starts things here with a double. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good answer. You get a uh, no out double. Got a chance to get him to third base with less than two outs. Reed Chumley was 0 for 1 with a pair of walks last night. He leads the Mountaineers in hitting with a 333 average as he steps in. Yeah, he should be looking to get something to the right side, something past the pitcher to get him to third. This is fouled back. So J.J. Weatherholt, the Big 12 Player of the Year, unanimous first team All-American, potentially the top overall draft pick coming up this summer, but he's played only four games. Went out with a hamstring injury against Stetson. He's missed now 19 games. Randy Macy said each day he gets closer. They just don't know. 
Yes, this is hit well to straightaway center field. Walk has to run back and chases it down. What recovery speed out there in center field by Walk. Now West is going to tag, and he will go to third base on a very deep fly ball by Chumley. Looked like maybe Walk slipped a little bit. Yeah, maybe, and the wind kind of picked back up, carrying the ball away from him. Uh, but he's got speed to make up. He's got that makeup speed. He can he can flat out go get it. Good good job of concentrating there and catching that ball. And a wise play there by West to be able to tag up in advance. And now the tying run is at third for Grant Hussey. Blocked there by Mudler. Hussey missed 11 games, make it 12 games before coming back here. This is some power potential back into the lineup. Hit 14 home runs, drove in 46 runs last year. Yeah, big, strong kid. Curtin's looking for a strike out here to get that second out. Hussey, four home runs this year despite the limited playing time for him. It's his 17th start as he pulls this one foul. Sooners got a run with a West Virginia error in the top of the inning, and the Mountaineers trying to answer things. Oklahoma got a combined no hitter last night. Braden Davis went seven innings. Reed Hensley finished up the final two. Sooners with 15 strikeouts. And their first no hitter since Dane Acker did it in 2020 against LSU down in Houston. That pitch misses inside. First time that West Virginia had been no hit since 1982. And the first time in a nine inning game since 1926. Almost 100 years wow. since the Mountaineers had been no hit in a nine inning game. 2 2 is fouled back. This is a big opportunity, honestly. If you're the Mountaineers, you've got to take advantage of these things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they got the they got the shift on. All you got to do is put it in play on the ground and and get that RBI. Oh, that glances away from Mudler, or a wild pitch may score the run, and it's one apiece. So we've had two runs scored in this game: one on a pass ball and one on a wild pitch, and it's one apiece. Yeah, not how you draw it up, but you'll take it any way you can get it. So Kyle West doubles, goes to third on a fly ball and scores on a wild pitch. And the Mountaineers have their first run of the weekend. Strike three called and two down. That's the first strikeout of the day for Curtin. Uh, good pitch. Just froze him on a slider. Just about couldn't place it any better. On the outer edge at the last instant. Ellis Garcia, the third baseman, takes a big hack at that one. He was 0 for 2 last night, batted third in the lineup. Today down in the number seven spot. Garcia. Kind of one of those super utility guys. He's played, made starts at shortstop, second base, and third base this year. In fact, Randy Mazie said when they came in to take ground balls on Thursday night, he looked and said, where do you want me to take ground balls, coach? He said, everywhere 
because you may play everywhere. <laughs> Two and two. Yeah, Gurton's falling hard today. 95. Sliders sitting 86, 87. You know, kind of that previous strikeout. It's hard when you're you're trying to fight off 95, and all of a sudden here comes an 87 mile an hour slider. And fights that one off. Fastball. Count stays two and two. Count two, Ellis Garcia. That one was close. Yeah, barely missed down, I guess. I think he thought he had it. And it's a two out walk to Ellis Garcia. So Gurton follows his first strikeout with his first walk of the day. And the Mountaineers get a chance to extend the inning for. Aaron Jamison, the center fielder. Yeah, with that walk, and even though Hussey struck out, he still fouled a bunch of pitches off there. Hey, starting to run his pitch count up pretty high for just two innings here. That's 36 pitches thrown by Brendan Gert. And this one is smoked foul just past the net down the first baseline. Aaron Jamison got into last night's game as a pinch hitter, went 0 for 1. Good story. He's a local kid from Morgantown. Been able to get into the lineup with a lot of the injuries. As Randy Macy said, it's just been hard to be consistent when the lineup has been so challenging and different every day. Yeah, with well that those kind of injuries, you got four or five guys that are injured that are that are mainstays in your lineup. It's tough. One and two on Aaron Jamison. It gives guys the opportunity though to get in there, but you'd like to have your main guys, you know, throughout the season. And a swing and a miss, a couple of strikeouts in the inning for Gurton. But the Mountaineers get even. A double by Kyle West, and he comes in to score the tying run. 1-1 one, one is our score. It's drove in a pair of runs last night. Derek Clark was unable to pitch around an error in the first inning. A dropped fly ball in right field. The Sooners produced that run. Strike three to McKenzie. So that is back to back strikeouts for Clark and three on the afternoon so far. Yeah, he snuck it by him there. He's not throwing real hard, but I think it's kind of sneaky fast. That'll bring in the Sooner catcher, Scott Mudler, one for four with a run driven in in last night's game. Mudler, a transfer from Northwest Florida State College. He came in along with the Witherspoon brothers, the pitchers for the Sooners. Same small college. Mudler's out at Johns Creek, Georgia. And 3-0 the count here to Mudler. A four-pitch walk. Just kind of out of nowhere there. It seemed like Clark was finding his groove, Rich, and just couldn't locate. Yeah, like you said, he's got three strikeouts. You know, they dropped the pop-up, which was a free out that OU scored on. But, yeah, 
he's been throwing a lot of strikes and all of a sudden four in a row. And so Isaiah Lane gets a crack here for the Sooners. Making his fifth start of the year. Shows bunt. It was a snap throw. It was a good throw by White right on target. But Muddler able to get back in there safely. Isaiah Lane was over four last night. Playing a good third base. He played third in the final game of the TCU series as well. Last Sunday. Yeah, he's, I've watched him make some plays and take some ground balls there in batting practice. Looks really athletic, very smooth hands. Late getting back in is Mudler, and he gets picked off. And you've talked about Derek Clark's move. I mean, it is very borderline. It hasn't been called to balk, and that time he was able to pick off Mudler for the second out. Yeah, I'm surprised the uh, first base coach hadn't really been in the ear of the umpire down there trying to let him know, like, hey, keep an eye on that angle, that front leg. He's gaining ground, which he's supposed, supposed to do, but I, he's – about halfway down the little over halfway down the first baseline with that stride. I mean that is as close as you get and I suppose you just keep doing it as long as you get away with it and then you adjust. Yeah, yeah for sure. So that's two down and the base is empty. Three balls and a strike now on lane. There's a walk to Lane, so it is back-to-back -back walks for Derek Clark. Yeah, that pickoff hurts there. And here's Jason Walk. The walks continue. Jason Walk was 0 for 4 with a walk and a run scored last night. Man, that's another oh, close yeah. one. But I will say this, Lane had a much bigger lead than his predecessors over there at first base. Yeah, with the left-hander, unless you have a steal sign, you know you're going. It's almost easier just to jab step on the, like he did right there. Jab step on the, on the when the front leg comes up and then get a read and get your secondary on the pitch. Oh, and two on Jason Walk. Sooner number nine batter. Walk had two hits for the Sooners in their midweek game against Dallas Baptist. DBU able to win that one 6 0. That was right after Oklahoma was coming off the three game sweep of TCU and into the national polls. and. Skip Johnson said this game will humble you. Yeah, I mean, they got th only had three hits in that game. One by walk and two by the leadoff hitter. I don't know. You can see it from up here now. So those last couple pickoffs, he's kind of leaning instead of keep staying back, which is a little bit easier to read when he's leaning towards towards first base bag. On the move is Lane. Doesn't matter. It's strike three to Jason Walk. So two strikeouts in the inning and four in the game now for Derek Clark. And it's one apiece as we head to the third first game of a doubleheader between Big 12 Player of the Year from a year ago and Logan Save. And as Randy Macy said, we needed Save to protect Weatherholt in the lineup. Now they're without both of them for at least 10, 11 games. Yeah, it's, it's tough. And you, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier. And when your when your best players, especially your best offensive players, you know, are out of lineup, it's it's hard to protect anybody. Spencer Barnett and two and one the count. Barnett playing shortstop. Freshman, a very very young West Virginia team. 
then you take out the veteran presence of Sauve and Weatherholt. Ball hit the foot of the batter. You could see Girton was a little bit uncertain. There was no initial signal that it was a foul ball. So Girton came hopping over there, was going to go ahead and play it when the plate umpire Mark Winter said, No foul ball. Yeah, you got to play it until you see something. Usually they make a pretty emphatic call right away on those. Good pitch and a swing and a miss. Barnett down on strikes. That is three strikeouts in the last four batters for Brendan Girton. Yeah, let's see if he's settling in here. He said they had a few at bats last inning where they fouled off a bunch of pitches, kind of ran the pitch count up. See if he can shorten this inning up here. It's 18 strikeouts so far in two games for Sooner pitching. And back to the top of the order for Skyler King. He grounded to third baseman Isaiah Lane to start the game. Who lost the bat? Where's the pine tar? Going to get a little help from Sam White in the on deck circle. He's just going to change bats. He is They're taking that one back yeah. to the dugout. He's going to load up a little pine tar on his glove with a new bat. Yeah, that bat wasn't cooperating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I've seen that very often. I Changing bats in the middle of an at bat. I see him go get some pine tar and use the same bat, but I've never seen that. It, it could be that it was damaged for hitting the, the base of the brick wall down there, Rich, in all honesty. Yeah, possibly. I didn't see him inspecting it too hard, but it may, may be the case. Well, I don't know if you can get a flat spot on that bag, they're going to let you use it. I might, as, might try to use it. Swing and a miss. As Girton slips a fastball right past him, back to back strikeouts, and in fact, it's three straight strikeouts going back to the second inning. And Girton, he's got the pieces, made some real jumps this fall. And Skip Johnson has said just making sure that he doesn't overcompete. Yeah, there's a fine line between over competing and, and competing and staying within yourself. You know, a lot of times guys get it, especially when they have electric stuff and a good arm like he does. It's easy to get out there and try to just blow by people and overthrow. And then you lose a little bit of your control. As Skip is fond of saying, though, I'd rather have to tell him, whoa, than tell him giddy up. Yeah, for sure. It's always a good problem to have with your players. Don't want to have to get the cattle prod out. <laughs> Two balls and a strike here to Sam White. There's Skip Johnson over there talking about that combined no hitter. And of course, he was there when Dane Acker no hit LSU. Then I think the 12th ranked team in the country were the Tigers that day down in Houston. That was a complete game, nine innings, and the Sooners had the combined no no here last night. As Sam White has a two out single in a right center field to keep the inning going here for the Mountaineers. But he said Davis kind of took advantage of the Mountaineers aggressiveness early in the game and was able to get through it. Anytime you get 12 strikeouts, they got guys that are attacking the ball, whether it's in the zone or outside the zone, which is prone to guys chasing. Here is Benjamin Lumsden. 
He hit one on the ground of the first baseman Snyder his first time. Lumsden, a transfer from UT Arlington. Hit 11 home runs there last year. Nice play there by Mudler to keep it in front of him and keep Sam White at first base. Yeah, really good job. That ball bounced way out in front of the plate. He just kind of spiked that pitch. Good job of Mudler squaring it up, keeping it in front. This one rifled foul and out of play by Lumsden. That time White took about three steps towards second base from over at first, and then put the brakes on. Yeah, a little bit of a bluff there. Either that or he didn't get a good jump and shut it down. Crowd's into it early. They were really into it late in that one last night. 2-2 Two -two is swung on and missed. Three strikeouts in the inning for Brent. Here's due to injuries, including veteran center fielder John Spikerman and the designated hitter Carter Frederick. Spikerman had hamate surgery and has a likely timeline of returning in four to six weeks. Meanwhile, Carter Frederick had surgery, surgery just yesterday to prepare a broken thumb. His right thumb suffered a hit from a line drive. Well, fifth year, Kendall, fifth year veteran Kendall Pettis says it was hard getting back to back injury news about crucial players in the lineup, but he and the other veterans knew that they had to step up at the plate and have consistent quality at bats to clear the bases. And Pettis did just that last night, notching four RBIs, including a bases clearing double up in the fifth. Thank you, Carly. That's what it's about. Next man up. This is pretty well hit to left. Skylar King chases back to the warning track. It's over his head and it's off the wall. And Bryce Madrin is going to cruise into second with a standing double with one away in the Sooner third. I'll tell you what, he's fun to watch. He stayed behind that ball and drove it over oh, the opposite field over the left fielder's head. That's not easy to do, even though the wind's helping a little bit. I mean, he got a good backspin on that ball. Double number five on the season for Madrin as he hits it off the Sooner Club sign out there in left. And with one away, here's Easton Carmichael. Sooners the go ahead run aboard. You're right about the wind as Madrin's on the move. The throw is a one hopper that's speared by Garcia, but Madrin slides in safely just ahead of the tag. So Bryce Madrin on the move. That's his fourth stolen base of the year in four tries. Yeah, he got away with one there. He didn't have a very good jump. Uh, the catcher just happened to bounce one in there and give him time to slide underneath that tag. Oh, one base hit to right, then the Sooners lead. Easton Carmichael scored the first run of the game, and he drives in run number two. Madrin, a double, a stolen base, and he scores as Oklahoma takes a two to one lead. And there's a little bit of that chaos, you know, stealing a bag and just dumping one into right field. Those two guys right there, I mean, on fire. Carmichael and Madrin. That's why it's tough to lose Spikerman at the top of the lineup. Those three guys together, it's, that's a tough row to hoe for pitchers. Easton Carmichael with his 20th run driven in this year. And another runner picked off at first. As Carmichael gets caught leaning, that's the second Sooner base runner that's been picked off by Derek Clark today. And it's out number two. I'm telling you, I may not be able to see very good up here, but that's way past the 45 degree line. I'm surprised we haven't, like I said, first base coach hadn't said something to the first base umpire. Okay, so take us through. You're, you're talking 45 degree line. That's yeah. on your step toward yes. home plate or toward force first base. Yes, it's the 40. It's basically that runner's lane right there on the first baseline is about the cutoff. 
But if you step past that 45 degrees more towards home plate side, it's a balk. It's, it's considered deceiving the runner. I see the, down there talking to the first base umpire now, but. This pitch a little bit outside to Snyder and one and two. So you're talking about the runner's lane. So you can you can kind of see the double box over there in the first baseline. It extends midway to home plate. And there you see yeah. it. That, that's kind of where your foot has to go, right, Rich? If you're going to throw to first, yeah. either at that line or or on the miss on the first base side. If you go past that line, it's it's considered a balk. I mean, that's pretty much right on it. It's pretty close. This pitch comes in and hits Michael Snyder. So with two down, the Sooners try to restart the offense. Snyder has been on base twice today. He had a base hit back in the first. And now he's hit by pitch with two down in the third. Snyder's not taking any chances over there. Yeah, and I don't know if they can see it from the first base side, but when he does pick off, he's got more of a lean towards first than staying upright towards the plate. Saying he's more noticeably keeping his weight on his back foot when yeah. he goes into his step home. Yeah, when he strides home to, th to make the pitch, he's more he's more over himself than when he starts to pick off, as he lifts up that front leg, he kind of starts leaning towards first. Swing and a miss. I'll tell you another thing is it really keeps you off balance. He gets the ball and he toes the rubber and he's set within about a second. So yeah. you don't have time to get comfortable. Yeah, he gets the pitch from the from the wristband and he's he's ready to go. That time he just steps off the back of the rubber and he thought that he had Snyder picked off. Again, he throws over. Now, this can go two ways. You, you focus too much on what's happening at first base and lose focus on the batter, Rich. Yeah, and then you make a then you make a mistake over the middle of the plate and get hit hard. And now you've got the batter waiting on these throws and waiting and waiting. All part of the game within the game. 0-2 oh, on Nicholas. That's the thing about it. He's got an 0-2 yeah. count, and, and he's two. thrown over four times. Yeah, and two outs, and a guy, I mean, really, Schneider's not a great runner. So I don't know why he's so worried about him. There goes the runner, and it's swung on and missed. So strike three to Nicholas. A lot happening, but it ends up in a strikeout. Oklahoma and leading this game two to one. Sooners are seven and zero oh in conference play. They have three more wins than any other team in Big 12 play. Now, not everybody has played two series already and is in the middle of their third series as the Sooners are, but a huge jump to start seven and zero oh for Skip Johnson's team. Yeah, looking to looking to get eight. Kyle West takes this pitch. It's a tough baseball conference, and to get a lead like that is 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 definitely a a good cushion to have. A lot of activity around the league. Keep you updated on that. Some of the action we had last night. One and one here to West, who doubled and scored the West Virginia run his first time up. Hit that double right down the seam in between center field and left field and all the way to the base of the wall out there. Last night around the Big 12 you had TCU with a one nothing win in Stillwater over Oklahoma State. Kansas 13 three over UCF.
Kansas State 5-3 over Houston down in Houston. Texas Tech a one run win in Lubbock 4-3 over BYU. And they went 11 innings in Austin last night and Baylor was able to win 4-3 over the Longhorns in the opener of their three game set. Get you a scoreboard here in an inning or so on what's happening around the league today. There is ball four to Kyle West and a leadoff walk in the West Virginia fourth. So it is now five strikeouts and two walks for Brennan Girton so far. He will deal with the second baseman Reed Chumley. Leading hitter for the Mountaineers is Chumley. Drew two walks last night, and it's like Skip Johnson wants to come out of the dugout to visit. Get Malachi and Kyson Witherspoon. Hensley was good last night. Ryan Lambert and Dylan Crooks has been good. Dylan Crooks hasn't allowed a walk yet this year. It's kind of been limited time for him. But a lot of activities, and as you said, you could use a guy for a batter or two in the first game of the doubleheader and bring him back in game two. Yeah, for sure. It's, like I said, it's all hands on deck to try to win this series. And if you can get the sweep, it's even better. Reed Chumley takes down and in. He flied out to the center fielder, Jason Walk, back in the second. So just some struggles here now for Girton. The walk to West and 2-0 and with Chumley. Downstairs and 3 and 0. Activity begins in the Sooner bullpen. Carter Campbell loosening as Girton pumps through a fastball for a strike. Yeah, he lit up on that one. It's only 93, just a little get me over, trying to try to get back in the zone. Get me over 93. Yeah, it must be nice. Yep. Another fastball for a strike. There goes West. And it won't matter as it is ball four back to back walks in the fourth to start the inning as Chumley heads to first and the tying run is at second base now for the Mountaineers five strikeouts and three walks for Brennan Girton. The Mountaineers send Grant Hussey, the first baseman, to the plate. He struck out looking in the second. It'd be interesting to see if they, what they do here. I mean, Hussey's a big guy, can drive the ball, or if they're going to play for a sacrifice. Didn't show bunt, and he swats this one past the diving Michael Snyder into right field. Madrin comes up quickly. And the throw will be cut off because they give West the stop sign at third base. But the Mountaineers have loaded the bases with nobody out in the fourth. Yeah, I'm surprised they stopped him there. That ball is hit pretty good, but he must not have got a very good jump from second. That should be a ball you can score on. I mean, Madrin had to go to his left range over to get that ball. So West Virginia just really playing for the big inning now not wanting to risk getting cut down at the plate base is loaded nobody out and Ellis Garcia who walked his first time is in so quickly trouble can develop when you can't find the strike zone yeah you start walking guys and then guys zone it in 
You know, just looking for that one pitch down the middle when you're missing bad. Garcia batting 277, couldn't hold up on that one. And the count is even. A ball and two strikes. Yeah, good pitch there. It's a big out. This one fouled back. Kind of a late arriving crowd today, but we'll give them an excuse and a free pass because originally this game was slated for a four o'clock central time first pitch. But when they started looking at the weather forecast for tomorrow, they decided to make today a doubleheader and they moved this game up an hour. Yeah, so I'm sure a lot of people didn't get the memo. I'm glad you and I did. <laughs> Swing and a miss. High fastball. Garcia went after it, and he's out number one. That's a big strikeout. Double play gets you out of the inning. It is strikeout yep. number six. That's going to be it. So Skip Johnson will come out and change pitchers, and it's just as we alluded to. So many guys available out in the bullpen when you're playing a doubleheader. And the Sooners want to try to shut it down right here and hold on to this 2 1 lead with 34 of them and had six wins. Really solidified Oklahoma's sweep of TCU last weekend. He came into the Saturday game, pitched three innings, and gave only one run with five strikeouts. And that's kind of what they're looking for out of him once again today if they can get it. Yeah, for sure. He, I mean, he's, he's set his role in the in the bullpen last year and he's a reliable guy and I'm sure that's why Skip didn't hesitate to go to him here. So here is the center fielder Aaron Jamison. He struck out against Girton back in the second. Bases loaded one away. Sooners lead by one. Aaron Jamison making his fifth start of the year. Got a little bit of pop. He's hit two home runs. Pulled through the right side. A base hit. The end of score comes West. Reed Chumley waved around third. He scores. And the Mountaineers get a two run single from Aaron Jamison to take a 3 2 lead in the fourth. The two walks have come home to score. And Carter Campbell greeted rudely by Aaron Jamison. Yeah, good piece of hitting. Just aggressive in the zone there, looking to hit with, you know, with runners on base. There's no bases loaded. There's nowhere to put anybody. So you, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to get a strike at some point. Back and forth game so far. Still only one down, and Spencer Barnett the batter. That ball got away. Huh. Mutler has to chase it down over toward Sooner Dugout on the third base side. Two walks and two hits to post two runs for West Virginia. One and one now to Barnett. Struck out his first time. And he was 0 for 3 in last night's game. Two and one now.
Barnett has struck out four times in the two games in this series so far. And he strikes out again as he's caught looking by Carter Campbell for the second out in the fourth. Yeah, good pitch. Frozen fastball away. Hit his spot. Just, just squared muddler up on the outside corner. It is seven strikeouts for Oklahoma pitching today and 22 so far in two games. Really 22 so far in 13 innings this weekend. And here's Skyler King looking at the first pitch. He's 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout so far. Big two run single by Aaron Jamison to put the Mountaineers back on top. In the air, straightaway center field, right at walk. And the inning's over. Walk away at New Love's Field as that's a missile that's hit right at Garcia. Got a glove on it, but Anthony McKenzie is going to beat it out at first base. I mean, that was scalded yeah, by Anthony McKenzie. It looked like it went off his ankle. I'm surprised he's not jumping around. Let's see if Garcia got any leather on this. Hard to tell. As McKenzie has a leadoff single, Sooners put the tying run back on board to start to the bottom of the fourth inning. And here is Mudler, who walked his first time, was saying that Oklahoma softball, the three time reigning national champions, have already won game one of their doubleheader just down the block at Love's Field. Taylor made double play ball to Barnett. He'll go to Chumley for one, and the Mountaineers roll over the double play. It is their 13th of the year. Yeah, it doesn't get much easier than that. Ball right to the shortstop. Good underhand feed. Take care of the ball. Get it to first. Second baseman kind of came across the bag a little too much. It looks like him for my advantage, but he's able to get it there. And the bases are clear. Two gone. Here is Isaiah Lane who walked his first time up and he drives this one right at Aaron Jamison and just like that the Sooner fourth is over leadoff single but a double play ball in central across the street from us at the Lloyd Noble Center. Of course we'll play a double header softball's got a double header down the street. Just saying if you're looking for something to do get out of the house enjoy the weather. The Mountaineers have Sam White the catcher leading off here. Big breaking pitch there from Carter Campbell. Carter Campbell gave up that base hit that gave the Mountaineers the lead and then got the final two batters in the fourth in relief of Brandon Girton. Brandon Girton was pretty good. It was just the walks that made for an early exit for him today, Rich. Yeah, those two leadoff walks in the fourth didn't help much at all and then gave up and then gave up the hit. He came back with a strikeout and then skipped like one of the left on left matchup and you know, a couple pitches in Jamison drives in too. Sam White had a base hit back in the third grounded to second base his first time up today. 316 hitter with four home runs is Sam White. Very close pitch there. Sam White, kind of out of necessity, had to do some catching, Randy Macy said. He's played third base, first base. He's played left field. But in preparation for an emergency or just to get him ready, they did let him catch a little bit in the fall. And it's worked out for him to be back there a little bit in the spring. As White drills a single into right to start the Mountaineers' fifth inning. He's two for three now. Yeah, it's good to have guys that are versatile. You know, kind of like walk for OU. You can play infield, play outfield. You know, having those guys really helps out, especially when you have get decimated with injuries like West Virginia has. 
Benjamin Lumsden 0 for 2 in this game 0 for 6 on the weekend. To the count. Be interesting to see what happens if there's a ground ball to third, if the shortstop covers the bag with Nicholas playing way over. Now Nicholas is way back there, almost in shallow right field. Yeah, I'm not sure just even on a routine ground ball, he'd be able to get the out of second. There goes the runner. The throw is a little bit toward the second base side. Sliding in safely is White. And as the throw goes into center field, he'll take third. So Lumsden strikes out, but it's a stolen base and a throwing error against Mudler. Talk about aggressive base running, both sides. Uh, just an errant throw by Mudler puts a guy in scoring position with less than two outs. So the Mountaineers a chance to tack on another one. Each team now has committed an error today. That's the 29th error against the Sooners defensively this year. And here's West. West has been a big part of things today. He doubled and scored in the second and then walked and scored on the base hit by Hussey in the fourth. Campbell just deals a strike. Seven left handers in the lineup for Randy Macy and the Mountaineers today and that's why Carter Campbell may be out there for a minute. Pulled toward first a fair ball the run will score as White crosses the plate and it's an RBI ground out for Kyle West the Mountaineers add one to their lead and have a 4 2 advantage. Yeah, that's tough to see. I was surprised they had uh, Schneider playing so deep with a runner on third. You know, if he's even with the bag there, he keeps that guy from scoring and, and still gets the out. He usually would run out there like that. You see both corners in or even with a bag. And now it's bases empty and two down for Chumley. Balls and no strikes. There was a little bit of activity out in the Oklahoma bullpen a moment ago, but that has pretty much ceased. It got a little stretching, a little meandering around some of the guys out there, but nobody throwing in earnest. Two and one the count here on Chumley. Life in the bullpen, Rich. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> yeah, those guys sitting down there all day long playing games. Just waiting on just waiting their turn. I spent many years up here broadcasting with the guy who spent oh about 10 or 12 years in major league bullpens and telling stories about what happens in the bullpens. Yeah. And some of them we probably couldn't even tell you. Tell Many you of there. them. Yeah, those are the better <laughs> stories, as a matter of fact. As that one is dropped into right field by Chumley. He's been on base twice for the Mountaineers. Here is Hussey. Hussey has. Really the biggest hit of this game so far. Beg your pardon, it was Jamison who had the biggest hit of the game, but Hussey factored into that scoring in the fourth for the Mountaineers. Hussey's one for two. West Virginia now six hits in this game. Five of them singles. Okay. 
There goes Chumley. The throw is right on target. Mudler guns down Chumley, and the inning is over. But the Mountaineers add one. 4-2 here. Mountaineers on top. And back out to the bump goes Derek Clark, who's been pretty good. What do you think of Clark so far, Rich? Uh, he's been good. Like I said, he's not overpowering, but he's been, uh, you know, throwing to contact. He's only got a couple walks. Like there it is right there, ground ball. Walk grounds out to Barnett to start the Sooner fifth inning. He's done a good job these last few innings, not not getting his pitch count very high. So I think he's had less than 12 pitches the last two innings. It's good for them to have Derek Clark back. He got hit, hit by a batted ball in a preseason scrimmage. And really getting him back kind of solidified that starting rotation, at least who it was going to be, and they could move guys back to the bullpen and put them in their proper seats on the bus, so to speak. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like I said, it's tough. You know, the injuries, I think, would he miss four games or something like that? Plus, probably the rest of the fall and spring. Kendall Pettis takes. But it's good to have that one guy, you know, that you can count on, run him out there, you know, eat up, eat up five, six innings just about every time he goes out. That one fouled off the foot of Kendall Pettis. A ball and two strikes to the sooner left fielder. Kendall is 0 for 2 in this one. He struck out in the first and grounded out to the shortstop. Spencer Barnett in the third. Pettis batting 280. And he takes a call. Strike three. That is six strikeouts for Derek Clark now. That's a good pitch. Too close to take. Might have been a little off, but with two strikes, you got to try to offer and swing at that, maybe foul it off. He's issued two walks and hit a batter. Madron doubled and scored back in the third. Madron scored the go ahead run for the Sooners at the time in the bottom of the third after that double as he scored on Easton Carmichael's RBI single. But the Mountaineers have gotten three runs since then to lead it 4 2. Right back up the middle, and Madron has another hit. He's two for three today. Fun to watch. It's almost like a professional hitter. Reminds me of old Matt Stairs, the old professional hitter. I like that reference. Matt Stairs played about 20 years as it That's all finally he did. wound up. He just hit. Just hit. Lefty. Easton Carmichael in. Easton drove in a run in the third and scored a run in the first. Just continuing to produce. He's batting 390 on the year. In the air. Right field backing up Lumsden and a couple of steps shy of the warning track. He'll pull up and pull in. But that many young guys. Leading things off here is Grant Hussey. We talking to Randy Macy about this last time through the Big 12 and a lot of memories that come flooding back in. He said, every time I try not to think about it, my wife reminds me of it, that he is going to retire. He, he said, you miss so many things in your kids' lives. They're sporting events and activities as a baseball coach, and he's going to go spend more time doing that. Yeah, I don't blame him. He had a very successful career. Reigning Big 12 Coach of the Year, in fact, Randy Macy, the 2023 Conference Coach of the Year. Mountaineers shared the regular season title last season. And his teams always play aggressive. They play the game the right way. Rio pitch here as Carter Campbell deals a strike to Hussey. 
As he was at the plate when Reed Chumley was thrown out trying to steal second base to end the fifth. And there's strike two. Hold on just a second there. And Hussey called back by the plate umpire Mark Winters. Hussey one for two in this game and one for four on the weekend so far. Remember these two will play another game here this evening when this one is done. Strike three call. So Carter Campbell comes from down three and zero in the count and strikes out Grant Hussey to start the sixth. Good pitch is frozen. You know if it's close, two, you got to offer at it two strikes. That is three strikeouts now for Carter Campbell. And nine for Sooner pitching in this game. Hard hit ground ball, a fair ball. Lane dives into foul ground just to pick it off. And Garcia will beat the play at first base with a one out infield single that was hard hit. Yeah, tough play. Lane Hunt kind of bobbled and getting up on the exchange. But good job keeping that ball in the infield, otherwise, it's a double. Mountaineers have their seventh hit. It is the first. For Ellis Garcia. And here's Aaron Jamison, who has the biggest hit of this game so far. A two run single in the top of the fourth, which gave the Mountaineers a 3 2 lead. Pushes a bunt, pops it up all the way over the net and into the seats. Campbell deals down and away, and it's even at one and one to Aaron Jamison. Randy Mays even went 0 for 1. Herder Campbell going to try to hold Ellis Garcia close over there. Mountaineers have stolen 41 bases in 51 tries this year. Mudler did throw out Reed Chumley earlier this afternoon. Two and two now. Wind has picked up in velocity as the afternoon has gone along. It's coming out of the southeast today. But there was virtually none during batting practice. And you can see you got a, a pretty good little breeze going out toward left. You can try to keep the ball down the zone. Keep the ball out of the air. Pulled through the right side into right field by Jamison, who has his second hit of the day. That throw comes back in from Madron and taken by McKenzie. So here come the Mountaineers again. Runners at first and second. Yeah, he just left that pitch up. Put a good swing on it, drove it into the outfield. We we're talking about we need to try to keep the ball down. Another man in scoring position for West Virginia and Spencer Barnett who's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts in this game stands in. Carter 
Campbell comes in with a fastball. Skip Johnson now strolls out. Well hit into the gap in left center field by Barnett. That's going to roll all the way to the base of the wall and score two. Garcia has crossed the plate. Here comes Jamison. It's a two-run single, and the Mountaineers take a 6-2 lead. Yeah, same as last time. Same as the last batter. Left that ball up. Drove it into left center. Barnett winds up at second, having driven in a pair. And the eight and nine batters for West Virginia have driven in four of the six runs in this game. Three straight hits now for West Virginia and nine in the game. Back to the top of the order for King, who fouls off the first pitch. Shows bunt, throw goes into second base. Now McKenzie will throw back to Lane. It gets away. And on that dive into the bag, Barnett kind of tipped over Isaiah Lane. Ball got away from him. Yeah, he catches that clean. I think he gets him. So a stolen base for Spencer Barnett. three for three in the stolen base department this year. Now the Sooners going to bring the infield in with a runner at third and one down. Skyler King is 0 for three in this game. Well hit to right field. Madron shades his eyes though and has plenty of real estate out there. Barnett will tag at third, and he will score the seventh West Virginia run of the afternoon. It's a sacrifice fly for Skylar King, and it's 7-2 Mountaineers. A yeah, good piece of hit, and balls up again. Drove it to the outfield, easy RBI. Mountaineers are getting about all they can out of the runners they've had today, Rich. Yeah, they've done a good job of getting guys in. He said, especially the bottom half of the lineup. Jamison and Barnett have four RBIs between them. For Coach Mazie's glad to see some more production after, especially after last night. No hit last night, nine hits so far today in the first game of this double hitter. And Sam White, who has two of the hits, is in. White scored a run back in the fifth after scoring. Two and one the count. This one back up the middle. That'll find a spot out in center field. Third hit for Sam White in this game. That's four hits in the inning for the Mountaineers. And three runs in so far. See how long he lets him go. Hope, I think he's just trying, hoping he gets this third out here. First pitch to Lumsden misses in. But he's left several pitches up in the zone that Mountaineers have capitalized with base hits. And Campbell has given up seven hits now since entering replacing Brendan Gurton. Nicholas was very deep at second base. Plenty of space to come in and retire Lumsden. But the Mountaineers sent eight batters to the plate in the sixth inning. They produced three. 
And one and one here on Michael. Snyder had a base hit in the first, then got hit by a pitch in the third. He was two for three last night and drove in three. But there are the numbers on Clark. And Rich, you were saying during that break, his last couple of innings, he's been very efficient with his pitch count. Yeah, it's been it's been 10, 11 or less the last three innings. It's part of the reason why he stayed in this game. He, his pitch count was up the first first couple innings, but he settled in, throwed a lot of strikes, and let the hitters get themselves out. Got a double play ball in the fourth that certainly aided that. Three and one now on Snyder. Michael Snyder having a great year. The University of Washington transfer. He's driven in 15 runs in seven Big 12 conference games. You'll take that out of your cleanup guy. Two rippies per game. Yeah, all day and twice on Sunday. He's a big kid, got good power. Just mature at bats, as Skip Johnson yeah. has talked I mean, about it. He's had more at bats than. Oh, off the glove of Clark. He'll pick it up and calmly retire Snyder, who hit a rocket back at the pitcher. Yeah, that was. That's going to leave a little bruise on your hand there. Hurts so good, though, when you hit yeah, the out. For sure. Yeah, he did a good job corralling it, making a good throw to first. But Snyder, well, he got some barrel on that one. Here's Jackson Nicholas, 0 for 2, the pair of strikeouts. That gets the attention of Garcia, the third baseman, coming in. The shortstop, Barnett, has shifted almost behind the bag at second base. So a lot of room over there on the left side. I'm sure you'd like to try to get some traffic and, and get Clark out of there and try to get in the bullpen. Try to chip away at this five run deficit. Nicholas had two hits, drove in a couple of runs last night. Easy pick up there for Clark, and it's two down. So the pitcher has retired each of the first two sooner batters here in the sixth inning. Yeah, tried a little drag bunt there. You're going to put it in that placement. You got to bunt it hard enough to get it by the pitcher, but the second baseman has to make a play on it. I'm sure you, part of the reason they're trying to do that is second baseman is playing four or five steps deep in the outfield, but you got to make sure you get enough of it to get it by the pitcher. This one pulled into the shortstop's glove, and Barnett throws out McKenzie. An easy one, two, three inning there for Derek Clark. He's retired. Exactly, and it's good to have a familiar face for the guys you know, that are returning and coming back. It's easier for them to re recruit you know, to a, fa a familiar face than a new face. Sooners are going to the bullpen for their third pitcher of the afternoon. It's Jet Lotus, the right-hander. And we saw Jet Lotus in the Sooners' midweek game against Dallas Baptist. He was the starter that night. He goes to work against Kyle West. Kyle West doubled and scored in the second, walked and scored in the fourth, and then had an RBI ground out in the fifth inning. Here are the numbers on Jet Lotus, the senior from UConn, in his fourth season as a Sooner. That goes off Lotus's glove and then through the legs of the second base umpire, Joseph Brown. Goodness. That thing was on a mission to get into right center field, Rich. Yeah, that ball was hit. Lucky to get a piece of it. It's almost like Snyder's the inning before, except for Lotus couldn't get enough of it to knock it down. And then, like playing cricket. <laughs> Here's Reed Chumley. It's 11 hits for the Mountaineers. Chumley had one of them back in the fifth inning and fouls this one off of his foot. These two teams will have a little time off in between games and then play game number two of their doubleheader. Tentatively scheduled for 
seven o'clock, but we shall see as we're just after five o'clock central and still have three innings yet to go. There you go, Jack. One and two on Reed Chumley. His average is up to 339 as Chumley top average on this team. Two down the left field line and foul. So we'll do it all over again on two and two to Reed Chumley. Jet Lotus, we mentioned, pitched against Dallas Baptist, only went an inning and gave up one hit against DBU in the midweek. took the lead in the fourth on a two run single by Jamison and have just added to that in the fifth and the sixth and they have a man aboard in the seventh. There goes West. This one hit well. Deep left field. Pettis turns, looks up, reaches up, and this ball is gone. It is a two-run home run for Reed Jumley. And the Mountaineers have opened it up. They lead it 9-2 to two in the seventh. So Jumley hits his fifth homer of the year. And he has now driven in 15 runs for the Mountaineers. Yeah, got a pitch up. Got it up in the air. Wind helped it out a little bit, but he got I think he got enough of that even with no wind it still gets out of here. Kind of almost half swing, didn't even really finish his swing on that. That may be it for Jet Lotus. A quick two batters faced, as you see Kendall Pettis doing a pull up on the wall after watching that one leave. As he will face Grant Hussey. Swung on and popped up here, Hussey. Over near third, Lane, as that one drifts back into fat, oh, to fair territory, and Lane puts it away for the first out. Again, Skip Johnson really process oriented with all of his pitchers. And they liked what they saw in the spring and in the fall from Brad Pruitt. Just wanted to see what it looks like when the lights go on. This is one of those opportunities. Here is Ellis Garcia. One for two in this game is the West Virginia third baseman. Garcia walked in the second, struck out in the fourth, and then singled and scored in the sixth inning. Twelve hits, as you see, for West Virginia. Three for eight with runners in scoring position in the home run from Chumley earlier this inning. A two run shot. Hard hit ground ball, but right to Jackson Nicholas. Two down. 
So far so good for Brad Pruitt. That will bring in Aaron Jamison, who has two hits, two runs driven in, and a run scored in this game. Big swing on that one. Got to buy him. Quickly, two strikes on Jamison. Jamison. Big hit back in the fourth. Two run single that gave the Mountaineers a lead they have not relinquished since. But he strikes out here. It was a nice one, two, three inning of work for Brad Pruitt. But the Mountaineers got a two run home run. Mountaineers on top nine to two as we hit the bottom of the seventh inning. Mudler, Lane, and Walk do up for the Sooners against Derek Clark, who's got it going today for West Virginia. He scattered five hits, given up two runs. Mudler drew a walk back in the second, and he's hit into a double play. This one pulled foul. Seventh inning stretch, Doc B. Longtime great Sooner fan came in to give us pizza, Rich. Yeah, you gotta love that. Anytime you see Doc B, it's a good thing. But that's right. If you're at, if you're at an OU baseball game, you're gonna see him. Mm -hmm. And and this uh, Saturday pizza party is a tradition started a few years ago by your former teammate, Russ Ortiz. Yeah. As this one is lifted to center field by Mudler. Kind of a gentle fly ball that's caught by Jamison, but great of Russ to start and of everybody else to kind of keep the tradition up. Yeah, for sure. It's a it's a cool thing. Doppy is a legendary baseball fan. He, like he was here. He was here when I was playing. That's dating myself. <laughs> Doc B is a staple and, and he had to make some choices today. Do I go to baseball or softball? I think he's probably gone back and forth between both as they're both playing a doubleheader, right? Yeah, I wouldn't die. He was fired up about it. I saw him uh, before the TCU game on my way in, or DBU game on my way in. And he was reminding me of Saturday's Doc B's pizza party. <laughs> Isaiah Lane is 0 for 1 with a walk. O2 just outside. What's Clark done so effectively here today? Just throw strikes and fill it up. Like you said, he's only had a couple walks, and that was in the second inning. He just he's just been around the zone, hasn't been missing middle middle. He's been working the the inside and outside corners, you know, on both sides to left handers and right handers. Clark is a transfer from Northwood University, a division two school. That played perfectly by Chumley as they had it. They had Isaiah Lane shaded a little bit up the middle, kind of to the pull side. And he hits it right into the glove of Chumley. Yeah, right at him. Good piece of hitting. Just, just good, better uh, defensive alignment by the, by the Mountaineers. And another two quick outs for Clark. Yeah, he's retired 10 of the last 11 Sooner hitters as he deals with Jason Walk, the center fielder. The Oklahoma women have just won their first round game in the women's NCAA tournament. They beat Florida Gulf Coast University 73 to 70. That game in Bloomington, Indiana this afternoon. So congratulations to Jenny Baranchek and for Big 12 regular season champion Sooners. Third straight season, they've made the second round of the big dance. Yeah, that's impressive. They've, they've been playing really well. Won their first outright Big 12 regular season title this year since 2009. And they shared the title with Texas last year, so they got it going. Jason Walk struck out in the second and then grounded out to short in the fifth. Flipped the bat away and got rung yeah. up anyway. 
Got that number two pencil look with his bat. And now the walk will be official. Sooners roll the lineup over. And we see Kendall Pettis, who's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts in this game. Only three walks issued by Derek Clark. He's also hit a batter. Breaking ball for a strike to Pettis. And they got him leaning, and that's the third Sooner base runner picked off today by Derek Clark. Top of the eighth, West Virginia batting with a 9-2 lead, and back out for the Sooners is right-hander Brad Pruitt. He came on in relief of Jet Lotus and got all three batters that he faced in the seventh. So he'll go to work here against Barnett in the number nine spot. Nicholas ranges over, fires it to first. Snyder dug it out with the backhand and kept his foot on the bag. And the Sooners retire Spencer Barnett. Yeah, nice play all the way around there. That's a tough play for Nicholas. Going away from first base, throwing on the run. And a really good pick by Schneider. Able to keep his foot, like I said, able to keep his foot on the bag and dig that ball out. So back to the top of the order for Skyler King. King is 0 for 3 in this game, but he drove in a run with a sacrifice fly back in the sixth. And this time Nicholas won't be able to reach that one. First hit for King. One out single in the eighth. And here is Sam White, who has three hits in this game. Three out of four. Deflected by Mudler, but King is easily going to take second base. Yeah, good read by King. That, he's, he was on the move as that ball was hitting the, hitting the turf in front of the plate. White has taken his average up to 333 with a three hit day. Way out in front of that one. And that one fouled out of play. So one and two the count. Mountaineers had an early one to nothing lead. Sooners grabbed a 2 1 lead in the bottom of the third on an RBI single by East and Carmichael. But it's been all West Virginia since then as they have scored eight straight. There goes King toward third. Mudler's throw is on target, and he's out. A strike him out, throw him out. As White strikes out, King is gunned down. And just like that, Brad Pruitt has retired. Especially for guys going, you know, on their backhand side, able to slide into the ball, catch as you catch, plant that right foot, and come up throwing. Madrin takes. 2-0 to the Sooner right fielder. Two more hits for Bryce today. Batting 338. Doubled and scored back in the third. Oh! 
see if this one stays in play for the third baseman Garcia. It will over near the Oklahoma dugout. Two down. Derek Clark gave up a two out single in the fifth inning. And since then, he has allowed the Sooners just one walk. And that walk got caught at first base, got picked off. Yeah, like we talked about last inning, he's still, I mean, I think he's got two outs. He's only thrown four, four or five pitches this inning. Yeah, that right there, pitch number 100 with two out in the eighth. East at Carmichael has been a part of both Sooner runs today. This one gathered up by Barnett, but he won't get Carmichael, who can get down the line. Infield hit with two down in the eighth inning. And that's the second hit for the Sooner DH. The way he's going these days, you you can just about mark him down for two hits a day. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You know, especially only being a sophomore, and he hit, had a really good year last year. He's he can hit. Michael Snyder drove Carmichael home with a base hit back in the first. Since then, he's been hit by pitch and hit a comebacker to the pitcher Derek Clark. Shortstop Barnett will reach this one and flip it to Chumley. Inning over. A two out single and a man left for the Sooners in the eighth. We go to the ninth inning. 9 2 Mountaineers. Sooner baseball is brought to you in part from left hander Derek Clark. He has given just two early runs and scattered six hits. Yeah, he's baffled the Sooner hitters. And like I said, he's not overpowering. He hasn't overpowered anybody, but he's thrown a lot of strikes, not very many walks. Lumsden is 0 for 4 in this game, 0 for 8 on the weekend. Looks like he let up on that one. Mm -hmm. Two and out the count. And a base hit to right as Lumsden turns on this pitch. And he is one for five in this game. So the Mountaineers trying to set the tables once again. Kyle West is in. West has been a big player in this one for the Mountaineers. Doubled and scored a run in the second. Walked and scored in the fourth. Then he drove in a run with a ground out in the fifth inning. And singled and scored again on the home run by Chumley in the seventh inning. Oh, and two on him here, though. Two for three with three runs and an RBI for West. He got him on three pitches. Reed Chumley, who has two hits, and Homer back in the seventh inning will be the batter. 
12 more strikeouts for Sooner pitching today. It's the 12th time this season they have had at least 10. And they've done it in both games in this series. 15 strikeouts last night. 12 more today. And nothing in two on Chumley. Chumley walked and scored in the fourth. Also singled in the fifth inning before the two run home run with West aboard in the seventh. Just a reminder this is the first game of a double header between these two to wrap up their Big 12 series. If the Mountaineers hang on, the series will be even after the Sooners won 13 nothing and got a no hitter pitched by Reed Hensley and Braden Davis last night. Foul ground, but playable for nobody. Snyder and Mudler couldn't get together on that one. It looked like Snyder was calling for it and kind of took his eyes off it last second. Ball ended up coming back towards the field of play from the wind. And for perspective's sake, and, and Rich, you know very well how this ballpark plays, but those pop-ups that get above the roof and the wind will hold them. Just hold them right there in play and make it really challenging. Yeah, it can be very difficult. Back-to-back -back strikeouts now for Dylan Crooks. It's West and Chumley, and 13 strikeouts for Sooner pitching on the day. Grant Hussey will be the batter. Every batter in the West Virginia lineup has at least one hit in this game. Grant Hussey had a hit back in the fourth inning. He's also struck out a couple of times and popped up. And nothing at two once again. Eleven of the 14 hits for West Virginia have been singles. They have a couple of doubles and a home run by Chumley as the 0 2 misses away to Hussey. Oklahoma is scheduled to have Nicholas, McKenzie, and Mudler in the bottom half of the ninth. And Crooks trying to get them there as quickly as possible. Right center field, pretty well hit. Walk back to the warning track and has it. Deepest part of the ballpark off the bat of Grant. Been able to find the barrels, and he's got a lot of ground ball outs, and has been really efficient. Hadn't had a lot of uh, long, long pitch at bats. You know, seems like the last three innings, every at bat's been four pitches or less. Sooners have had just three base runners in the last 15 hitters. And one was erased on a double play. One was picked off at first base. Jackson Nicholas 0 for 3 with two strikeouts in this game after a two hit night with an RBI last night. And it looks like Sooners are going to pinch hit here. Patrick Engskoff will bat for Nicholas in the number five spot. Engskoff fouls this one back two and two. Little Rock, Arkansas, sophomore. 
Only the third game in which he's played this year, and he rolls this one to first. Hussey will take care of the first out in the ninth. So they will take about 45 minutes in between games and then play the second game of the doubleheader. But what a get better game for West Virginia, mostly due to Derek Clark. Yeah, he's kept him in it, and the Mountaineers have done a good job swinging the bat. Like I said, they haven't had a whole lot of extra base hits, but they've been filling it up single after single after single. And then with the big home run. The separator, as Skip Johnson likes to call it, the two-run home run by Chumley in the top of the seventh. Anthony McKenzie has one of the six Sooner hits in this game. But he's down 0-2 against Clark. Into center field and a base hit for Anthony. So he has four hits on the weekend now. Yeah, stayed back on that off speed pitch, drove right back up the middle. Gonna have to, they're gonna make a run at it. They're gonna have to try not to do too much and strings several hits together. And so the catcher, Scott Mudler, will be the batter. Unfazed, Clark deals a strike. Eight into third innings, seven hits, one earned run, six strikeouts, and three walks. And up 0 2 on Mudler is Derek Clark. He's also picked off three base runners, Rich. That's made a big difference. Yeah. Nick. Through the right side and a base hit here for Mudler. Sooners go station to station with McKenzie advancing to second. Yeah, I know he's got a good move, but after the first one, you know, guys, guys should have a pretty good idea of what he's doing up there and shorten your lead up a little bit. And if you're, and a lot of times, if you're stealing off a left hander, you're going first move anyway. And if you get caught, you get caught. Having three guys picked off in, in one game is not ideal for sure. That is eight hits for the Sooners today. And Isaiah Lane will be the batter. Isaiah 0 for 2 with a walk back in the second inning. A flare that may find a home in right field, and it will. So three straight hits for the Sooners. McKenzie is around third. He'll come in to score. And a rally brewing at Eldale Mitchell Park. An RBI single by Isaiah Lane makes it 9-3 West Virginia. That may do it for Clark. So Randy Maisie will walk out of the West Virginia dugout. Isaiah Lane just finding a way to get the job done there. There you see the Mountaineers head coach talking it over with. You know, I would agree with you. It's just that that move is so good when he uses it, he might be able to get a free out over there first. Lane doesn't have a very big lead. One and one to Jason Walk. 0 for 2 with a walk back in the seventh inning. And I would imagine if Walk reaches safely, this will be it for Derek Clark. Yeah, I would assume so. It's over 100. You're just giving him a chance to, to finish the game and get a complete game. But you don't see very often anymore. Even Oklahoma with a no hitter last night. It wasn't a complete game. It was a combined effort.
And there's ball four. Sooners have the bases loaded with only one out. And we'll see if Gavin Van Kempen enters. As the Sooners pinch hit here with Jackson Willits coming to the plate. As he will bat for Kendall Pettis up in the leadoff spot. Sooner freshman getting an opportunity off the bench with one out in the ninth. And 0 and 2. Sooners have a run on an Isaiah Lane base hit here in the ninth to close the gap. And that's two down. A big strikeout for Derek Clark. Bryce Madrin will be the final hope. He's got two hits, including a double, with a run scored back in the third. Mountaineers trying to hand the Sooners their first loss in Big 12 Conference play. But not yet. Madren rifles one into right field. Mudler scores. Lane scores. The throw comes to third, and there's the final out of the game. Diving to third walk gets gunned down. And this ball game's over. It'll be a two-run single, though. The Sooners end up getting three runs on four hits. Let's look at this play again, Rich. Yeah, it's... It's a good throw by the right fielder, but you don't want to ever want to make the first or third out at third, especially to end the game. That's a tough. That's a tough one right there. So I'm not sure if he was going on his own or or Rayleigh was sending him, but.